All right, this just shows you how fast this stuff grows. Last year I cleared most of this out of here, and as you can see, it's all pretty much grown back again. It grows really fast, this stuff. I brushed this trail right out, about four foot wide last year, year before, and uh, as you can see, it's all pretty much back over again. Quite amazing how quickly this stuff grows. Literally, it grows two or three feet a year. Let's uh, get some of these little ones off. There we go. Keeping the trails walkable doesn't take much for them to get completely overgrown. And then people start making other trails, and then nobody can actually find the proper trail. Then you come up through here in the dark. You're like, where's the trail? Nobody can see it. So we will just trim some of those off of there. Excellent. That one can come off of there. Perfect. Now I just walked up through there, literally. It was grown right across the entire path. Now there's probably a couple of foot up through there, easy. I brushed it right out the other year. So I'm not going to clear it right out this year, I'm just going to trim it back. And here I am, back at the meadow. Always a good spot to be, other than the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are a bit relentless down in here. That's not too much of a problem. All right. The height of this grass, absolutely insane. Yeah. <laughs> right. I will continue on my way back down the trail. So I've come out to a place I like to be. Now, a lot of the trees I planted down in here are, are all growing nicely now, thank goodness. Yeah. Come back out and I found uh, somebody had rearranged my campsite. <laughs> all the rocks had been thrown around and a log had been rolled down and I'm like, why would you even bother? Just leave it where it is. All these leave no trace people. Yes, it's fine. But, uh, everything that's here is natural materials. These logs, don't matter whether they're here or over there. You know, it's <laughs> it's a log. It's going to rot away. But in the process of rotting away, it actually makes a very nice chair and a nice place to sit for a while. So, just getting a little fire going. Going to do a bit of food in a bit. And I have my tea. Tea, a few bits and pieces. I have a trusty bucket. These are the buckets that I hide. I hide these out and about in places. At least I didn't find that and throw it away. That's actually extremely useful. People are idiots. Yeah. Right. I'll uh, keep an eye on this fire. I only need a small fire, so we can do a little bit of cooking later. And uh, I'm just going to sit and enjoy the day. I think we got thunderstorms coming because that sky was blazing blue sky when I got here and it's not now so I could be in for a bit of bad weather today so we shall see see how it goes other than that I'm gonna sit and enjoy this have a nice cup of tea and uh, relax a bit well back to a site I've not been to for a while feed her up fire's just going it's only gonna be a little fire because I've got to do a little bit of cooking not a lot and Everybody would know what time that is. That makes it tea time. Oh yes. Been done this for a while at this site. Yeah. Like I was saying, I don't think I'm going to be here long because <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to pour hard, I think, looking at it. They said it might. So. Either way, I'll take it. The, the road in here is a bit of an interesting drive at any time of the day, but when it's absolutely slick wet with fresh rain, yeah, that's not so good. Oh, that's good tea. Well done to the guy that made it. <laughs> Amazing how real quick all this lot grows back in again. It uh, wasn't long ago, this was a road. There was a road through here. And right in the middle of where this road is, there used to be an extremely nice campsite. And I can't go more than about 20 feet from here, because I have a campfire going. And so I'll just cut across this little piece here and show you something.
I guess all the way up through here was actually a road. It's all been reclaimed. It's all rather nice now. This is actually a very good campsite. Good spot. I can still see my fire, so I'm good. Yeah. And if we get some wind, we'll have a nice flag over there. Yeah. Yes. This used to be an amazing spot for camping. Right, I will head back on over there. A little bit of breeze. Nice. very busy spot people still use it which is why I uh, try and maintain it out here a bit otherwise it just gets completely overgrown and completely useless and it just ends up a right mess but people do actually use this as a, a site on their through hikes because this is part of uh, believe it or not this trail is actually part of one of the longest trails in the world and so people do use it as a through hike so it is a good place for people to stop over the uh, it's also a very nice place to sit. This log down here used to be my footrest. It used to be right there. <laughs> but some kind person decided to sling it down a hill. Not sure why, but whatever whatever floats their boat. It's now back up the hill and it's back ripped along. Have a nice day. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's about how big I need the fire. Just need a, just a gentle warming fire. I don't need a big fire. I'm not making a big long log fire or anything like that. And uh, I have five gallons of water there ready to put the fire out and i finished if it needs five gallons i'll be very surprised but it will be out i put a bunch of shale in the bottom there there was a lot of loose broken shale and that up in here so i put a bunch of shale in the bottom there as well i know that there's nothing in the ground there that burns because um, see i've had probably eight to ten fires on that site over the years and i, I know there's not a lot of anything left in there that can burn and it uh, but I, there's a lot of that small shale laying around, so I thought, okay, I'll just make a, a nice little bed out of that as well. That all helps. Uh, then uh, when it's all finished, that just gets crushed up into basically sand and little chunks. So, yeah. There was a nice woodpecker over there just now. There's a lot of woodpeckers up through here, which is another reason why I like to come. Because there's a lot of, a lot of wildlife up through here. It is a, um, a bear corridor, so you do have to be a little bit aware. Keep, keep your eyes open. It is a... We find it easy to walk through the trails, so do the bears. That piece of trail over there that I just brushed out all the, the garbage off it. it uh, that, that piece up through there, I don't know why, but that grows so fast up through there. Like I say, I, I cleared it out about four foot wide it was last year or the year before. And uh, it was grown right over again. Literally, you, it was, uh, you had to walk sideways in a couple of bits just to get through the gaps. So <laughs> I brushed out another bit in there. I'll do another little bit before I go. But. It, uh, this trail doesn't get a lot of use from uh, like a, as a as a local trail as I would call it it's more of a through traffic it's but it is an important trail to keep maintained if everybody looks after a short section of trail everything ends up good but, uh, that's that's what I do I'll, I'll head out and the, the trails that aren't the big touristy trails I'll clear up all the deadfall and um, make sure that all the brushes cut back and all that kind of stuff and markers are where they need to be and then uh, people use them and it maintains a trail it becomes easy to spot it only takes one to two years of nobody using the trail and you can't even find it again everything grows so fast now like i say this was a road <laughs> but hell two years ago this was a road so as you can see it's all probably waist high in places with fireweed and all kinds of greenery growing up in there yeah, it's really nice and it's good because it, it, they reclaim the roads but it, it creates a, an open area in in the forest where the light can hit the ground and all the flowers grow and you'll find all kinds of bees i've been watching the bees there's loads of bees in here yeah so that's good it's good healthy population of stuff and that's what you need in a forest dense forest like that yes it's very good for timber production and uh i'm sure 20 years from now or whatever they'll come and cut out what's left of these big trees in here but it, uh, it just ends up like that yeah no light on the ground it's 
not a lot of um, biodiversity in there. There's a lot of insects in the logs that are on the ground and fungi and stuff like that, but you need areas that let the light in too, so yeah, there's a good and bad and everything. Right, let me just concentrate on this. I'm just going to push those ends in because I don't need a big fire, and uh, then I'm going to make some food. Well, this is a good little spot to come out to. I can make it out here. It's pretty quiet. What did I say? There's uh, not too many people come down through this way. It is an important trail. For whatever reason, a lot of people don't really use it that much. So I know what I can do. As my new saying is, I put my feet up in front of the fire. The more tea I drink, the less I have to carry. And the blue sky is coming back over that way, but the grey sky is building up over that way. And since the weather's coming from that way, I'll take that. But this time of the year, we can get some pretty, uh, pretty severe storms. We've had uh, several tornadoes. Uh, numerous hailstorms. This time of the year it's an uh, absolute classic for our hailstorms. For some of our hailstorms the hail can be this big. So we get one of those roll through. I'm heading into the trees somewhere to get away from that. I do have various tarts with me and what have you that I can sling up very quickly to make a, a hail shelter. And trust me, you get hit in the head with one of those hailstones, it's, uh, that's the end of that game. Yeah. So that's a good idea to, to be hiding. Yeah. Yes. My fire's good. I just had a sausage roll. That was rather nice. So I'm going to sit here, enjoy my tea, watch the fire burn down. I don't need much more on there than that. Just watch that burn down to next to nothing. I might soak it down with a bucket of water that's behind me. And, uh, there is a creek down here. I can't hear it flowing actually. It, uh, it doesn't flow all the year. It's, uh, it's like a little seasonal creek down here. Further up that way, there's a better water source. But this one down here is just closer. It's literally 100 feet. Yeah. That's why I like this site because it's a it's a good handy site. It's fairly easy to get to. If you know where it is, it's actually reasonably easy to get to. It, it's not much of a walk. It's a bit of a drive, but it's not much of a walk. And it, uh, however, once you're here, it's actually a very nice spot. Yeah. It used to be very very popular. Huh? Fell out of favour for whatever reason, I don't know. People like to go to all these trendy campsites where they've got amazing views and you know, it's all their Instagram pictures. So they're welcome to go there. They can take their pictures, they can go and do whatever they want, that's fine. I would rather come here, sit here, have a nice cup of tea, enjoy the birds in the trees. Yeah, this is a good camp spot. I have camped here many times. It's a shame they put the road right through the middle of that bit because that was actually the best bit to camp at. Yeah, the twin trees, these two trees here, that's the twin trees as they call them. That was the uh, the back side of the camp spot. But since then, but like I say, it'll come back. It is grown back. I can't believe how much it's grown back up in two years. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, the inside of this road, right down the bottom, where it comes in here. Literally, it, uh, it's so overgrown now, you, you'd think it had been there 10 years, but it's not, it's only a couple of years. So. Oh, that's good. That is good. I need to find a little pokey stick so I can just move some of these ends around. videos I uh, clear up a lot of this small stuff all the dead low hanging crap on the trees because that's the stuff if you do get a, a grass fire come through which we can because this grass all dies off it, uh, you get a grass fire come through if you remove a lot of the small stuff from the bottom of the trees it just makes it a little bit harder for the flame to get up into the, the canopy 
because once it's in the canopy it's, it's gone it's on its way it uh, you're dumping water you you get the air support to dump water on it at that point but it uh, the mosquitoes are a little bit relentless so what I'm doing is putting some of this stuff on it and it uh, gets rid of the mosquitoes really fast they hate this stuff <laughs> they hate the smoke so it may look like a, a small smoldering smoky fire which is exactly what I want I don't want a big fire just need a small smoldering fire look at that sun's coming back out again yeah cloud is thickening up over there I have noticed that that's where the big mountains are over that way these are the foothills oh look at that now if that doesn't keep the mosquitoes away nothing will but that's all you need to do you get the mosquitoes come through you can drown yourself all day in bloody bug spray and what have you I use a bit of that but I try to avoid it but it uh, this you put a little bit of this uh, stuff on here look how much smoke that makes it, uh, it soon catches fire though it'll soon flame up and once it flames up psh, the smoke's gone however <laughs> in the meantime there was literally clouds of mosquitoes here just now and now there isn't <laughs> Ooh, cloud is breaking up. We'll take that. Oh, see, now it all flares up. Once it flares up, it just disappears. All the smoke's gone. That's all smoke is. Smoke is just incomplete combustion. That's all that is. But to get rid of the mosquitoes, you put a handful of that stuff on there, and it's everywhere. The whole forest is full of that stuff. Like I say, I try to clear off as much of that garbage out the bottom as I can. And it uh, it works on the mosquitoes. It doesn't work on these little flies. I don't know what these little ones are. Other than the pain in the rear end, yeah, I hate those little flies. And as you can see, it soon flares up, and that, that burns through so fast, it's just insane. Yeah. Right. Birds are lovely. Yeah. Woodpecker was there just now. But it is a good spot. Yeah. Nice flag over there. Excellent. There's some old picnic tables here from way back in the day. There is a, a fire pit site just the other side of that big tree there. But in grass season, obviously, there's no way in a million years you could use that site. It's just surrounded by dead grass. That's not a good plan. Over in the trees over there, that's where one of the picnic tables used to be. There is a site that a lot of people camp at. There's the remains of an old horse corral up over there which is where most people camp because the grass in the bottom of there is, uh, is actually pretty good and it uh, however there is a, a dead leaning tree in the middle of there this bit over here is where a lot of people camp that up in here like I say used to be a much nicer camp thing here until I stuffed a great big road right through the middle of it but whatever so, like, well, uh, let's put some all these small pieces on here but I don't want a big fire I do have some bigger wood cut down there, but I'm not putting that on. I don't need that. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Good idea every now and again. Like I say, this is a, a wildlife corridor. A lot of people do use it, or a lot of animals do use it. There's a nice shot up through the trees. I wish the smoke kept these other flies away. I call these house flies because they look like those little house flies. Yeah. I don't know what their proper name is. Who cares? They're, but they're, they're a pain in the rear end, so it'd be nice if they weren't here. So. Right, I will uh, have my grapefruit. I've got a grapefruit in here somewhere. I will have my grapefruit. I'll have another little snack. I think I'll let this fire die right down now. I'll just fold in all the ends and what have you, because I don't really need it much now. And uh, then I shall soak it all down and head out. It's mosquito time again. <laughs> Now doing this stuff is uh, very good for your physical health because it's uh, hiking out here the, my pack today probably only weighs 20 pounds 25 pounds something like that and with my gear belt it's probably about 30 40 i don't know all told so physically it's very good for you but it's also really good for your mental health too because you come out in places like this you just sit unwind listen to everything do something useful like clearing up a bit of trial if everybody adopted just a, a small piece of trial and uh, kept it clean and all that kind of stuff the trials would be in great shape i have to admit 
the uh, a lot of the what I call the tourist trails now, or the semi-tourist trails, seem to be getting more attention now. So that that's good. There are um, things being done and tidied up and repaired. A lot of the old uh, <laughs> the old backcountry um, outhouses, if you like, a lot of those in some of these sites were getting pretty bad. But I have noticed there seems to be a, a program down through all the valleys down through here where they seem to be replacing a lot of them. And that's nice to see the infrastructure being replaced because that's then good for about another 30, 40 years. So it's nice to see that being done. And hopefully that's where our conservation pass is going. That's hopefully they're using it for that. And it's uh, not going into somebody's pocket for something else. Yeah, but uh, hopefully that's what it's being used for. There does seem to be a lot of um, stuff being done, which is very nice to see. I do like to see that. I uh, saw recently on the um, Brad Creek Trail Association that they got $300,000 from the um, grant from the Kananaskis Pass money. So that's nice to see because those guys do an amazing job looking after trails. If you want to see really well maintained first class, world class beaten trails, just go to Brad Creek. I, I don't know how many thousands of kilometres of trails they've got down there and they look after them. Most of it's volunteers absolutely amazing they do a really good job down through there i've never seen trials anything like that maintained <laughs> you know actually they, they do a brilliant job so nice to see some of the money going towards that so that, uh, there's good and bad i don't mind paying a fee what i um, didn't like when they first bought all that kind of stuff in was there was no accountability absolutely none you know they, they could have just been stuffing the money in their own pocket for all i know and the way they worded everything, there was no accountability and there's no way the public can actually check to see what it is they're doing. Which, uh, any time a politician does that, you've got to start thinking, okay, what's actually going on here? So, hopefully, looking at what I'm seeing being done down in the valleys and what have you, it uh, looks like things are improving, so let's, let's hope that that is the case. So, like I say, if everybody looks after a little bit of trial themselves, this piece of trail up through here, I've been looking after this piece of trail for, oh, I don't know, I couldn't tell you how many dozens and dozens and dozens of trees I've cleared off this trail through here. It is a trail, like I say, it doesn't really go very well. It's not a hugely popular trail, which is why it overgrows so fast. It, uh, I did notice that somebody had cleared out, they'd obviously somebody been up in with a chainsaw, and they did clear out some of the garbage up in here, which was very nice to see. So uh, that's always nice. Wind is getting up a little bit. So I can see the flag over there starting to flutter a touch. So, uh, but my fire is being kept nice and small. I do have a five gallon bucket of water with me, so I'm not too worried about that. But, uh, I've noticed the wild strawberries are starting to look rather nice too. It, uh, they're hard to find. Like ones that haven't been got, they're hard to find because obviously the uh, all the wildlife likes to eat those as well, which is great because you know I can bring food with me. That is their food, so. But they are a nice, nice little snack every now and again. Just have a, a wild strawberry. They're not very big, but then they're hard to find. But the uh, the fireweed and everything in here is all starting to come. Let's see the flowers. I noticed there was a whole bunch already in flower on the way up here, so that was nice. So, yeah, I will enjoy this. And uh, as you can see, the sun has come back out again. Everything is good. Everything's good in Dave's world. We go with that. <laughs> Like I say, this is very good for your physical health coming out of places like this. It's also really good for your mental health too. So, let's find a couple of small dry pieces of wood. Let's plug those in there. A couple of little bits. Job done. And I do have a little bit of tea left. I usually get home and I have some tea left over. So my plan today is to actually see if I can actually drink all of my tea. <laughs> and so far, I'm doing pretty good. Ooh. That is it. That is my entire tea ration. Gone. <laughs> I always know when it's time to head home because I run out of tea. <laughs> I love these little flasks. They're actually food jars. They are the proper function is food jars. And I, I have done them with soup before. Now you make up some soup in the morning, put them in. And they do the soup stays really good. If you're doing a um, day trip out somewhere, 
and you don't want to take a stove with you for heating up soup and all this kind of stuff because I have my little propane too and you certainly don't want to light a fire just to uh, warm up some soup and what have you so you can make them up in these little jars these are made by a company called something moss I'm not going to advertise their name but they're made by something called moss and starts with a T and they are brilliant <laughs> absolutely brilliant so get one of those I actually found one the other day these things are about 30 bucks I was actually in a thrift store the other day so the other day a few weeks back and uh, I found one in a thrift store for five bucks I thought that's five bucks worth spending so now I have two of these things they're, they're absolutely brilliant yeah you know, I like I like thrift stores I'm, I'm not a great person I, I, I hate waste waste drives me nuts everybody goes on about environmental this environmental that and all that kind of good stuff which is good it's good that people pay attention but if people just wasted less then we wouldn't have half the problems we've got nearly 40 percent of the food that's produced in the world goes to waste it, 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 it's staggering and a lot of that is deliberate to maintain profit margins and stuff you know it's uh, you don't want to have too much food on the market and it's i see a lot of countries now a lot of places i believe california just did it um, they actually make it illegal to throw away edible food so if it's past its sell-by date or approaching itself by that most stores just throw it out well it's still edible you know sell by date doesn't mean you know if you eat it a day after that you're gonna drop dead it just it just means that's its best buy date and there's a lot of marketing involved in that just to like I say maintain profit margins keep everything nice and ticking along and it keeps the supply chain going and all this other good stuff however to me that's a complete waste of perfectly edible food when you look on the streets of any city, any town, you'll find people there with no food or very little food. And yet people throw away vast amounts of food every single day. So there are places now, it's becoming more and more um, mandated that the food has to be used. Uh, they can't sell it, but it has to be used. So a lot of it gets donated and all this kind of stuff, which is great. I love to see that because that's food that's not going to waste. There's a lot of hungry people out there. You know, there's 7 billion people on this planet. There's a lot of hungry people out there. And uh, and yet every day we throw away perfectly good food. That just makes no sense to me whatsoever. It, uh, the only thing that makes any sense to is the uh, big company's bottom line. And it, uh, I hate that. But all the food prices worldwide have gone up at the moment. They, uh, they, they haven't gone up. They've been put up. And those two things are very, very different. We uh, won't get into that too much. It, uh, there's, there's too much profit taking going on at the moment. When you see companies making half a billion profit in three quarters of the year, then uh, there's a there's a problem. Yeah. It, uh, and it, the cost of food and the cost of shelter and everything is all going up, but wages aren't, and that's what fueling inflation. And unfortunately, uh, the the big companies don't really give a crap to be quite honest they don't care they're still making their billions of dollars they don't care yeah but uh, they do care when people don't buy their products so, yeah let's waste less people don't need to uh, use all the stuff that they do and like I say these if you buy them new for 30 bucks I found one in a thrift store for five bucks put it in the dishwasher done finished nice and clean perfect so now I have two. Yeah. And that is the end of my tea. So unfortunately, now I have to let the fire die down and have to head home because I'm now tealess. Can't be out in the forest tealess. <laughs> yeah. So I do have food. I've got plenty of food and plenty of water. But I was cutting up some wood earlier. The, uh, the, the Silky 2000. I've mentioned many, many times in the past, these things are insane. I worked out the other day. I don't know if I should say this because I might jinx it, but I'm gonna say it. This blade I worked out is nearly eight years old. I've had this thing like nearly 10 years and I've broken one blade, as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, that was purely my own um, fault. I was very, very tired at night. I was cutting a tree that was probably about to round that one over there, like five, six, seven inches, whatever it was. And uh, I 
lent on it as I was pushing forward and I heard a dink and I actually cracked it right through here but it's uh, this blade like I say seven eight years I've worked out I've had this blade I have in my kit I actually have a brand new blade still in the packet this is brand new never been used and it's uh, it's it's razor sharp I mean this one's still sharp but like I say I cut wood with this just about every single week I'm cutting something with this some logs you know as round as this one and it, uh, I cut one the other day that wasn't far off as round as this one but it was one of those uh, poplars and they they're really soft wood insanely heavy wood but I did cut it with this you know I had to go each side of the log it was that big it was almost as this is 14 inches long I believe and the log was just about that length so it was a bit of a pain so I had to cut it from one side cut it from the other side but I did actually get it off the trail so that was good but those things are insanely heavy so I don't like lifting them so I do have a brand new blade and as you can see that's been in there for oh, years yeah literally seven eight years I've had this thing so that goes back in there so it goes out of there so if you're ever in any doubt as to what kind of wood saw to buy there are smaller versions of this there's like a, a little pocket boy and all that kind of stuff which is great a lot of people will find that the only reason I have this one is to do a lot of trial clearing but the I have the Katana Boy 500 at home you've probably seen some of my other videos with that in it these things they don't take up a lot of weight they're not I don't know what they actually weigh I couldn't tell you they're not heavy I can tell you that they're not heavy I don't know what they actually weigh but the uh, I put a lanyard on it because anytime I'm working with a tool I like to make sure that you know it's, it's in my hand if I drop it it's it's still there so it's it's an amazing tool like I say seven or eight years I can tell you now these these teeth are still insanely sharp and I literally cut wood with this thing just about every single week I'm cutting something with this thing whether I'm trail clearing cutting up firewood whatever and touch wood the uh, <laughs> This one's still going good. Yeah, I, I read a, when I first bought one of these, I, I saw a bunch of videos and what have you, and did a bunch of reviews, and the uh, everybody was saying, "Oh, the blades break, the blades break, the blades break." The blades only break when people forget this is a pull saw. It only cuts on the pull stroke, not on the push, and it uh, that takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you get that rhythm, and it's a sound, the the sound is is once you hear that sound, once you get used to that sound. It cuts beautifully and like I say this is still insane I, I'm reluctant to run my fingers along there because that is still insanely sharp you can buy a little file to sharpen these but I think to, to buy a new one of these saws uh, Canadian they're about a hundred bucks when I bought this one it was 70 79 I think so, so say 80 bucks when I bought it and now they're a hundred bucks you know so they haven't gone up a lot the blades you can still get the blades for about 40 bucks but it's uh like i say i don't i don't need a new blade on that it's it's actually razor sharp I'm, I'm tempting fate by touching that so i will put that down so i don't cut myself on it my fire is doing very good the sun the sun is still only over there so it, uh, i know we're only mid-morning and i'm very reluctant to head out of here because i've still got that much of a day to go you know it's uh, up there once the sun is up there then I, I'll start thinking about packing up and heading out but uh, other than that I'm just gonna enjoy this this is good yeah more people should do this you have to be very fire aware you have to be comfortable out know, in places because there are bears and cougars and God knows what out here but, uh, I, I did see some um, drop-ins on the way out here which I'm convinced was a canine but uh, it's, it's very hard to tell the difference between wolf crap and a large coyote because they look very very similar but it uh, so it was a canine my guess would be um, that it was a coyote track a coyote scat but it, uh, wolves do their, their, their scat is almost the same a wolf footprint however is big yeah so if you see a canine footprint that's like this big that's a wolf that ain't no coyote <laughs> coyotes are more kind of this big 
but they're almost exactly the same shape if you look at them very very similar shape one of the trails that I was on the other day I was out in the middle of nowhere and uh, I, was there, I found some canine and it, it wasn't a dog because it was just wrong it just didn't it was in the wrong place for a dog and it, uh, it's, so it, it, I think that was a, a large coyote but there are wolves in that around here there is a wolf pack way off over that way but they have a huge range wolves have an enormous range and same as we do we like to walk through the easy piece there's a, a huge hill on that side and there's a huge hill on that side um, I say hill uh, from where I'm sat now to the top of those hills is about 350 to 450 meters elevation gain on both sides so a lot of stuff likes to use this valley which is why the trail is through here obviously because it's the easiest way to get through but it uh, so you do have to be a little bit aware of what's around but if you uh, if you talk and waffle this is another reason why I do the videos because uh, my voice out here in the mountains will travel a very long way and you can do that every now and again trust me that echo I can actually hear it echoing down there ah, yeah I can actually hear it echoing down the valley down there so that's good right I will stop waffling I've now drunk the rest of my tea so I'm now tealess so <laughs> yes either way as I said earlier, in tribute to the great man himself, I, my new saying is, the more tea I drink, the less I have to carry. Morse Kahansky, obviously, uh, his, his saying was, the more you know, the less you carry, which is why I have such a large backpack, because <laughs> I've no idea how he managed to get everything he needed into a two litre kettle. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, super amazing guy. If you ever met the guy or you read any of his books or whatever you cannot fail to learn from that man if you enjoy bushcraft and outdoor stuff Moore's Kahansky if, if he, he just such a mine of information absolutely a, a mine of information there was a guy called Tom Mortison um, that he used to um, get a lot of stuff from uh, the legendary Tom and uh, between those guys let me tell you, huge, huge amounts of knowledge. There's some very knowledgeable people here in Alberta too. Um, Bruce Sawalski, he does uh, outdoor courses. Um, Ray Mears, obviously, he's Canadian. Everybody knows, uh, everybody knows Ray. Well, he's, he's British, but he's done a, a lot of stuff out here in Canada. But it, uh, and there's another guy you can learn a lot from. Yeah, there are many bushcrafty people that you can learn a lot from, and uh, unfortunately, there is quite a few on the internet that you're probably not going to learn much from at all however <laughs> there are a lot of very good people yeah there's a guy called murray around here as well it, uh, he does a lot of stuff kusk kusk bushcraft he does some um good videos and uh, a lot of good learning stuff he likes to keep a lot of the old skills alive i'm, I'm a great believer if we have technology then let's use it he uh, me I'll, I'll carry this saw he will actually make up a a, a bow saw and what have you and he, he's, he likes to keep a lot of the old skills alive, which is, which is good. You know, it's nice that people do that. Right, I'm going to switch this off and uh, sit and enjoy the rest of the day. Well, as you can see, fire is out. I just put about three gallon, three gallon of water through there. Poured a gallon on, stirred it all around. As you can see, it was only a small fire on top of shale. But it uh, soaked it right down, literally. <laughs> put about three gallon of water on there in the end. But that's how you do it. Soak it, stir it all up, soak it, stir it all up. And you should you know, just walk up and down and like this. That's mostly rock and that in the bottom, but there's still soaked in the bottom of there. And then, uh, like I say, always poke holes in the, the ground. There's nothing under there that burns, I know there isn't, because it's uh, pretty much down to, um, not bedrock, but there's like a shaley layer underneath there. So that's all soaked down. Got three gallon of water on there. Make sure nothing's left behind. I will leave my log right there because it makes no difference whether it's there or there. No idea why somebody would move that, but whatever they did. Yeah. It, uh, this is a site that I come back to at the end of the year when it's coming up towards the end of the year and I'm not using the site anymore for like summer camping and stuff. I come up and I disperse all the rocks and tidy it all up and what have you. Make sure everything's good. Like I say, this is all just wood on this side, so that can just rot away. It's actually probably full of insects, I should think. But it actually makes a very good chair, so I will go with that. 
and uh, that is how you leave a campfire as you can see it was only a little tiny one today but that was soaked down there's three gallon of water gone on there so it, uh, that's how you should leave them right time to move on right just going to clear a bit more garbage off the trail up here a bit more scrub I had to make that a little bit wider up in there and then uh, we will call that a day but, uh, there was a nice breeze through here just now the uh, cloud as you can see is starting to bubble up and uh, I do not want to be out in the middle of here when that hail comes through which I suspect it might today they're uh, saying we might get heavy hail so we will call that it flags looking good humidity is up in the mountains I can definitely feel the humidity is higher but that's good we will take it that means we've had lots of rain in the forest and that is actually a good thing all right we need it soak this down with a little touch all right you can actually head off up the mountains that way I'm not going that way I'm just going to clear a little bit more of this uh, brush along here and then uh, I will call that a day and head out all right one last look up through the meadow wind's starting to pick up I've noticed that it, uh, all the grasshoppers or whatever these things are clicking around around me there's loads of them yeah. all up, up in there somewhere Ooh. there's a little ground squirrel look at him there you go I see you god those things move fast <laughs> they're tiny but boy do they move fast they really do get a move on all right I brushed out all that a bit further up there as well walked up and down there twice cleared all that out so that's good this is a fairly easy trail to follow so I'm gonna walk down here problem is if you get all the, the long grass turn up and people don't know where anything goes so. If you walk it every now and again, you only need a little bit of foot traffic through somewhere like this, and you'd be surprised how uh, how quick it changes. Right, one last look at the meadow, and off I go. Thanks for coming along. <laughs>